5090 November 22 paper 1 2 this is a second video and uh, please uh, do this paper before you actually attempt the before you look at the video because if you are going to just do the questions you, know, you must do the questions first and then look at the answers and see how I have solved them if you are getting any of them wrong question 21 which changes occur when a person walks from a very cold room into a hot room sweating will increase and skin blood vessels will dilate skin blood vessels means skin arterioles not capillaries capillaries cannot dilate because they have no muscle in the wall of the capillaries please remember that capillaries cannot dilate then question number 22 the graph shows measurements taken of one aspect of the internal environment of the human body over time so these are the limits of variation and then there's the body temperature and then the time in minutes what controls the internal environment of the human body to keep each aspect within strict limits so blood glucose blood water content temperature now how is that kept constant is what controls the internal environment so the answer to that is b homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment this is the factor which is going to keep on maintaining it at a certain temperature because we have in the body we have enzymes and enzymes work best at a certain optimum temperature and they can't really get them to the temperature to change a lot that would be disastrous uh, for the enzymes so that is why the answer is b then when a bright light is shone into the eye the pupil becomes smaller which statement explains the response ciliary muscles in the eye contract circular muscles in the iris contract sensory cells in the iris detect the bright light no sensory cells in the iris never it's the retina which detects light everybody must know that sensory neurons stimulate the ciliary muscles in the iris no iris has muscles so it has to be a motor neuron which supplies the circular muscles of the iris and they contract motor neurons supply the circular muscles in the iris and that contracts and that makes the pupil smaller in size so less light enters the eye and the retina is saved uh, this is damage to the retina is prevented so that is why the answer is b then coming to question number 24 the flow chart describes the reflex action a painful stimulus is picked by e so e is a receptor it could be this answer or this answer the impulse is transmitted by a f neuron sensory neuron the impulse is passed to the g neuron by the h neuron so h is the relay neuron and g is the motor neuron and then if finally the impulse is transmitted to the eye to create a response that is an effector effectors can be either muscles or glands nothing else muscles or glands so the muscles contract circular muscles of the iris contract or something else you can be talking of something else as well biceps and triceps contracts so that is why question number 24 the answer is c question number 25 a patient shows symptoms of unexplained weight loss, severe thirst, and frequent need of urination. A test shows high levels of glucose in the urine. The disease, what is the diagnosis? Is diabetes. Question number 26. Which graph shows the length of the biceps and triceps muscle in the upper arm when the elbow joint is fully extended and the arm is straight? When, uh, so which graph shows the length of biceps and triceps muscle? So what happens when you extend your arm? The triceps contracts and the biceps relax so the biceps have to more in length so the answer is c i think this has been removed from the syllabus so actually we don't need to do it even then coming to question number 27 four discs a b c and d each containing a different antibiotic are placed onto agar gel in a petri dish the agar gel contained e coli bacteria the petri dish was then sealed and incubated for 24 hours at 35 degrees celsius the results are shown which antibiotic is most effective now what we are seeing here is which has the biggest clear area you see these were all the bacteria growing and this antibiotic has diffused out and is going to give you a very large clear area so that is why the answer to this is c because this is the most effective antibiotic because it has destroyed the large number of bacteria or this gray area is the bacteria which they have shown you and this gray area is the bacteria now coming to question number 28 bacteria fungi and viruses often grouped together as microorganisms 
which statement about microorganisms is correct? They've talked to you about bacteria, fungi, yeast, uh, unicellular bacteria, unicellular viruses, non-cellular. Now, which statement about microorganisms? All types of microorganisms are used to produce antibiotics. No, I'm sorry, viruses cannot produce any antibiotics. Only fungus, a fungus called penicillium produces an antibiotic. So this is wrong. Bacteria and viruses can only be found inside living cells. No bacteria can be found inside yogurt. Uh, viruses, yes, have to a parasite. So bacteria are not found. So this is wrong because bacteria can be found just living on their own as well. Decomposition is brought about by bacteria and fungi only. Yes, this is correct. But why are the others wrong? All microorganisms contain DNA but not in a nucleus. No. Fungus has a proper nucleus. So the DNA is inside a nucleus. The yeast cell is a fungus. And that contains a nucleus and the DNA is inside a nucleus. So fungus, bacteria, yes, DNA is not inside a nucleus. Virus, of course, is non-cellular and it has a DNA or an RNA strand and there's no nucleus. In fact, there's no cytoplasm. So the answer is C. Then coming to question number 29. Now, when you look at question number 29, it says two containers X and Y filled with equal amounts of dough. This is another variant as well for making bread. The mixture in the Y had yeast in it. The containers are left in a warm place for two hours. The diagram shows their appearance after this time. Without yeast, with yeast, which substance produced by the yeast causes the difference between the dough in X and Y? So very basic. It's the carbon dioxide. So the answer is B because the carbon dioxide makes the dough rise. We all know that. And so that is the answer. Then coming to question number 30. What is the principal source of energy input to biological systems? Source is the sun. Because without the sun, no light energy to chemical energy, no photosynthesis. And that's what's mentioned in the Quran, that the day there's the wall between the earth and the sun, and that will be the end of this earth. Because the sunlight is the one which is going to provide the light and the heat, the light energy for photosynthesis and the heat to keep it warm. So, 30, the answer is D. Question number 31, in the carbon cycle, what is one way that carbon can enter the atmosphere? Photosynthesis actually uses up the carbon dioxide. Fossilization is, uh, nothing happens and no carbon dioxide input or output. Feeding wrong, so the only answer left is burning. So burning, yes, carbon is uh, combustion and decomposition. Three processes which produce carbon dioxide is respiration, combustion, and decomposition. Then 32, the graph shows the concentration of dissolved oxygen at different points along the river at which point is sewage emptied into the river. Now this has come in the previous variant as well. So the answer is V, and I've explained this to you how Sewage will cause uh, more microorganisms, which means more bacteria, and bacteria respire and use up the oxygen, so uh, the oxygen levels will fall. And this is the concentration of dissolved oxygen, which is on the y-axis. Question 33, a difficult question. A gardener has two groups of strawberry plants, labeled X and Y. They are grown to maturity under identical conditions. So two groups of strawberry plants, X and Y. He makes some observation and concludes that those in group X were produced asexually. Group X were produced asexually. Those in group Y were produced from seeds. Which observation most closely supports this conclusion? Which observations most closely support this conclusion? Now, if group X is produced, is actually produced flowers all at the same time. Yes, that should be the case. If they are asexually, that means they're all clones. And they would produce flowers all at the same time. So, one is correct. Then group X, which produced, is actually produced flowers which varied in shape and size. Well, if they're clones, then they couldn't be in shape and size. So, this is wrong. Group Y produced flowers all at the same time, but they were seeds, and seeds can be different. There's a lot of variation in the seeds. 
you can plant the same seeds and then grow differently so how is they all so this is also wrong group y produced flowers which varied in shape and size now group y was from the seed this is the one group y they varied in shape and size some of which were produced earlier than others yes because seeds must have come all from uh, you see different flowers so 1 and 4 is correct so that is why the answer is b Question thirty four. The diagram shows a section through a flower. Where does fertilization take place? C is the anthers. This is where pollen is produced, and pollen is the male gamete. B is the stigma where the pollen from the anthers is uh, onto the stigma. Then D is the style, and A is the ovule. So where does fertilization take place? A inside the ovule fertilization takes place. Human gametes are different from each other. Which information about male gametes is correct? D why D because the size of the male gamete the sperm is like this but the ovum is bigger. So the nucleus is here. So they are small and they are of course produced in millions and they can swim. Thirty-six. During the menstrual cycle, hormone M is released in the body to stimulate the production of the egg, of eggs. This is then followed by the release of the hormone N, which brings about ovulation. What are the names of the hormones M and N? You see, release in the body stimulates the production of eggs, so that has to be follicle stimulating hormone. So it has to be C. And LH is the hormone which brings about uh, ovulation. There's a surge of LH, luteinizing hormone, because as the ovum is then ovulation takes place, then behind is left the corpus luteum, and that's why this is called luteinizing hormone. So, FSH and LH. Question number thirty-seven. What is the correct order for the sizes of pieces of genetic material shown in the table, from smallest to the largest? Gene, molecule of DNA, chromosome, molecule of DNA, gene, chromosome, chromosome. So it's just between gene, chromosome. So if you look at it, this is a chromosome, and the gene is a portion of DNA which codes for a characteristic, and the molecule of DNA is the uh, the whole DNA. So which is in the molecule of DNA is this which is inside the. So the answer is A. Gene is the smallest. Molecule of DNA is the bigger, and then of course the chromosome has got, of course, all the proteins on which the DNA is wound around it. So, 37 is A. Then this has come in the previous exam as well. A man of blood group A and his wife of blood group O had two children, both of blood group A. The man concluded that he must be homozygous for the allele IA. Since he thought half the children would be of group O if he were heterozygous. So a man, a group A, and his wife is O, and they have uh, has two children, both are group A. So their two children, both are group A. The man concluded that he must be homozygous for the allele, so that means he would be I A I A. Since he thought that his this that his children would be of group O if he were heterozygous, why was his conclusion unsound? Now you can say that you can see that if he was heterozygous. The man can read that he must be homozygous. That means he must be I A I A. He must be homozygous for there. Since he thought that half the children will grow up oh, if he was heterozygous. If he was heterozygous, then we would have this. We would have A's and O's. But that is not necessary. There's just a 50% chance of having an A group and no group child. But then, if he only has two children, it's a very small number of progeny. This is again a very important syllabus point which they are checking. 
so genetic genetic ratios are unreliable for small numbers and you need to look at my video on this chapter in which i have explained this uh, in great detail so genetic ratios are unreliable for small numbers okay coming on to question number 39 rising carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are causing the earth's climate to warm up in what way might this change of climate affect the process of natural selection now what is natural selection natural selection is that there's variation then there's change in the environment and then some are better adapted they survive pass on the uh, desirable alleles to the offsprings so now the question is i'll tell you the answer is d is the answer some mutations may prove to be an advantage in warmer conditions basically what we're going to see is in natural selection is that some are at an advantage and some are at a disadvantage because of an environmental change now they have said that the earth's climate is going to warm up so if it's going to warm up what would be advantage and what would which which uh, organisms will survive so the fact that this is the point that they have given you some mutations may prove to be an advantage in warmer conditions so those mutations and those advantageous alleles will result in more and more of that crop or that animal or anything so a small rise in temperature may reduce the rate of photosynthesis in plants now there's nothing to do with natural selection farmers may try to grow different crops in warmer areas now this is of course artificial selection why because uh, artificial selection is when you do something which is of human benefit it may allow some animals and plants to colonize new areas why why how would they reach those new areas how how could those suddenly those animals can't migrate an elephant can't migrate from america to australia or from africa to australia and how were the plants going to colonize new areas how did they know that this place has got warmer or whatever is going to so how is this going to happen so that is why you have to re really read it very thoroughly to really understand it then coming on to the last question the gene for insulin production can be transferred from human dna to bacterial dna these bacteria are cultured to produce human insulin what is an advantage to patients of using this type of human insulin instead of insulin from other animals now basically it will allow patients to pass the insulin gene to any offspring no well we are not passing any insulin gene we are just making uh, insulin from genetically engineered bacteria it will cause patients pancreas gland no we are getting we're giving him ready made insulin it will be more readily available to introduce on a commercial scale yes that's the correct answer but why is d wrong it will result in a transfer of the insulin gene to patients well we're not even giving that we're just culturing the bacteria in the lab the bacteria are producing insulin from us in the lab we are separating the bacteria and separating the insulin and then of course bottling the insulin and selling it to patients who are going to inject themselves with insulin we are not transferring the gene the gene for insulin production can be transferred from human dna into bacterial dna these bacteria are cultured to produce human insulin it's just like the chicken gives the egg and you eat the egg and you make an omelet and eat the egg or well, you're not putting the chicken into your stomach when you want the egg and in your stomach the egg is the chicken is going to produce the egg so question 40 c was the answer so please try to understand and revise genetic engineering if you want to struggle Uh, with this and that finishes this uh, paper and thank you very much and please do subscribe we've got to reach the 10000 mark thank you very much and best of luck for the exams